I think it's about time for another visit or not combined with the good, bad, and the ugly. So should you visit this city or not? And what are the good and the bad things about it? This time, let's talk about Tokyo, a city that far, far surpassed all of my expectations in pretty much every way. I'm the Mad Traveler. I'm traveling the world, and this is my adventure. Let's start off with my first experience there. I get to the hostel around 11 p.m. and I'm standing on the street looking around. It's dark. You can only see the light from the street posts just shining down on the street, providing a yellow hue with some taxi cabs parked here and there. No traffic whatsoever. It's middle of the week. And I'm just looking, thinking, this can't be real. It looked like a movie set that they forgot to make dirty enough to look like the real world. I mean, it was so clean, so peaceful, so quiet, so quiet that you could just whisper and somebody could hear you. And so clean, cleaner than like a small Swiss village in the mountains. I mean, it just seemed unreal. And the taxi cabs looked fake. They were so clean. It looked like a fresh coat of wax had been put on every single taxi cab that morning. I mean, there was no trash on the street, no cigarette butts on any sidewalk, on the street anywhere. Just the cleanest place I've ever been to in my life. Now this was in Asukasa, I think it was. So not right in the center of all the action, which would be probably Shinjuku, Shibuya, those places. But it just... I've never been to a place so quiet, clean, and calm in such a big city, and it was crazy. And then I get into the hostel. The hostel is amazing. It's the nicest hostel I've ever been to. Go upstairs, put my bags down, sit on the toilet, and the seat is warm. Not warm because somebody else had just sat on it. Warm because it is a heated toilet seat. It's got more electronics in the toilet than my phone, I think. I mean, it amazing it was the weirdest craziest thing ever the showers have shampoo and conditioner in them this is a hostel by the way the cheap accommodation that you stay in and you expect to be kind of crappy going into the room it's a capsule it's capsule beds it's so awesome I climb up to the second level and get in and the capsule is so big you can sit in it it even has a little air vent in the back so that because sometimes they get stuffy in there so fresh air comes in if you want and it has a table that you can fold down so you can sit in your capsule close the curtain plug your laptop into the electrical outlet pull the table out and do some work or watch a movie do whatever you want <laughs> You don't have to talk to anyone, you have as much space as you need. It, it was just so cool. And the common area was traditional Japanese style set up with the walls and uh, the little tables kind of on the ground. And it was just, it was awesome. It was, it was, it was much better than, than any hostel experience I'd had as far as cleanliness and everything just being amazing. Uh, I did learn one thing though, <laughs> after going in the common room. When in Japan, do not crack jokes about anime. That's a big no-no. <laughs> they take that pretty seriously there. So I'm massively jet-lagged. You'll be very jet-lagged when you go to Japan, most likely. But I try and go to sleep, wake up the next morning, and uh, just wander around the area. And there's some big famous temples there, and some shrines, and it's just... There, there's lots of shopping, but once again, everything, where all these people are, is so clean. And there's not even a single person smoking. No one is smoking. I asked the guy at the front desk, I said, I thought Japanese people were known for kind of smoking a little bit more. He said, yes, but only in designated areas. And everybody follows those rules. Everybody follows those rules. So I wanted to get a Coca-Cola just to wake up, get some sugar, some energy, keep my cheeks nice and plump. Uh, so I asked where to go. Guy says, go to the 7-Eleven. Okay, 7-Eleven. Didn't expect to find 7-Elevens in Japan. But as I'm walking there, I saw one of the designated smoking areas. It has a little roped off area in front of the 7-Eleven, and that's where the people are smoking. And not a single person takes their cigarette out of there. They smoke, and then they either throw the cigarette in a trash bin, or they have the cigarette butt, 
and they put it in a little trash container that they keep with themselves, like a little metal trash can in their pocket. I mean, they just don't litter. It's, it's awesome. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Not even in the uber, I'm so environmentally friendly Europe, but I only finish half of my food and I throw the rest away and I smoke and I throw it everywhere. <laughs> but in Japan, they really practice what they preach. Now, now let me do a little side note here, since I got on 7-Eleven. It is the funniest thing ever, the 7-Elevens in Tokyo, okay? I think that there is a law that says you must have one 24-hour 7-Eleven, they're all 24 hours, one 7-Eleven per block in Japan. So every square block must have a 7-Eleven. And they are the funniest things ever. The, 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 the drinks that they have, the food that they have, oh my god, almost everything is this green tea matcha stuff. They've got that in every possible flavor, even Kit Kats. <laughs> Which, even though I didn't like it, for some reason I had to taste all of them. But perhaps the funniest thing, they have so many funny food combinations, is you can go to 7-Eleven when you need to get your fix for spaghetti hot dogs. Yeah, they have spaghetti hot dog there. It's the, the best thing I saw. I loved it so much. It gave me much more joy than it should have to see that. I mean, it was just cold spaghetti with some tomato sauce on it and a hot dog bun. Um, man, and they have some hot food there too as well. And they have alcohol there as well. And oh, oh, this is a, another funny thing about Japan, actually. All the stories about the animated... Uh, anime and their animated, uh, let's call them inappropriate magazines, is apparently true. So, in a lot of convenience stores around the world, you'll have a magazine stand that starts here, and it may have newspapers and some other magazines and some other stuff, and some car magazines and motorcycle magazines, and then at the very end or in the very back, it'll have some dirty magazines. And here, they go over like that, and then you get to a small section with some dirty magazines with humans, human, real people in them, not that big. That's how big the section is for it. And then the section this big with animated ones. <laughs> okay, so that's another side note. I just had to say that. It's too funny. When all of us from the hostel saw that, we just couldn't stop laughing. Um, but, but all right, let me get back to, to the city itself and not just the 7-Elevens. But the 7-Elevens are, are great because they're open all the time. When you have to go somewhere, you take the public transportation. And my goodness, I have never seen something so clean, so proper, so safe, and so welcoming. Usually public transit, you're like, oh God, this is horrible, there might be some drunk in it, or it's going to smell bad, or there's graffiti everywhere, or I don't want to be at this, this tram stop at night, who knows what's going to happen. Not in Japan, not in Tokyo. There is not a single piece of trash in the public transit. There is not a single, not a single person has taken their keys out and scratched it on the windows. When I was in Berlin and when I was in New York, you couldn't even see out the windows. There was so much of that on it. It was just disgusting. Hell, when I was in New York, I felt like going underground into the subway. I was just going to get stabbed. Welcome to New York. Stab you. In Tokyo, I, I thought they were going to give me a little wet and warm hand towel to clean my hands with in case I had touched the railing as I walked down the steps. I mean, it was just amazingly perfect, and nobody talks, everybody's silent, everybody's polite, but you don't eat in the metro, you don't eat in the subway, <laughs> you better not. The funniest thing was to watch uh, someone come on who didn't know the rules, and you know the rules because of what they do when you break them. Everyone's just looking down at their phone or their paper or their book, and then someone comes on and opens a bag of chips and puts one chip in their mouth, and you hear that, and then every Japanese person on the train, so basically everyone on it, just looks like this. Doesn't say a word, <laughs> doesn't get up, just everyone turn and look and you can see the person with the chip just like, oh shit, <laughs> put that in my bag. It's, 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 oh man, it's funny. But they don't, they also don't have trash cans. So that's one thing, you will end up carrying your trash around for a while in Tokyo if you're used to eating on the go or just not knowing that they don't have trash cans that often in Tokyo. So 
Now let's get back to what makes Tokyo so fun and so awesome, okay? You take the public transit, you get out somewhere, and there could be thousands of people everywhere. Not a single person hits you in the shoulder when you walk by them. There's none of this, I'm taking up the sidewalk, you move, I'm not gonna move, blah, 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 or hitting you. I went to Shibuya Crossing, the biggest crossing in the whole wide world, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be annoying, I better put my stuff away, watch out for pickpockets, blah, blah, blah. I walk there, not a single person, even people looking at their phones, not a single person ran into me or any of the people I was with. It wasn't even close. Everybody gives you your space, which is nice when you're in a new city trying to explore it and you don't know where to go or what to do. It's nice to not have people just running into you. And it's nice to not have people pickpocketing you as well. Also, one of the safest cities I've been, outside of maybe a uh, small Swiss village in the mountains. Just so nice. So what makes Tokyo so fun and so great is it has lots of these interesting little districts. So the district that I was in was a district where they do sumo wrestling. And oddly enough, I heard it was also the district where they have the Yakuza, their mafia. But the mafia doesn't really mess with regular people. So you just walk around and you feel safe, you don't feel anything weird or bad. But then you walk down a little side street and you see all of these sumo houses, which is so cool. And you can even go to a little sumo show or watch them training, because they only do the fights at a certain point in the year. So if you're not there for that, you're not gonna see it unless you pay, you can pay to see them train and have their meals and everything. Best experience I had in Tokyo, by the way. And I'll put that in a video for sure. And then there's another district, so that was the Suma district, there's another district uh, that has all of the, uh, I'm going to call it weird stuff, because it is weird stuff, but it's really funny and interesting too. They, they have a shop that's like five or six floors of anime figurines, yeah, anime figurines, which 90% of them appear to be women with uh, eyes about this big, uh, chest about this big, waist about this big, and butt about that big. <laughs> and hair down to their knees. <laughs> and I mean, these figurines aren't cheap. Some of them cost a thousand dollars or more. So they have full shops like that. In this district is the Akihabara. Akihabara? Yeah, Akihabara. They have, um, they have uh, the, the maid cafes where the women dress up like maids. And, or or uh, I think one of them I didn't go to one of any of them because they're, they're way overpriced, but now I kind of wish I had. Apparently they're just full of businessmen and you go in and to get the waitress to come to your table you have to meow, apparently. And one of them like, meow, meow, and <laughs> she comes up. <laughs> they also have these cafes there, I think I put this in one of the videos, cat cafes where you can go and have some tea and play with the cats. I think they have... Um, Ah, oh, what are those little spiky creatures called? The cute little noses. Um, hedgehogs. Uh, I think they have a hedgehog cafe. And uh, my goodness, I, I'm, I'm sure they have more of those kind of cafes where you go and you buy a tea or a coffee and you interact with some animals. <laughs> it's, it's creepy and funny and fun at the same time. And um, they also, in this section, it was great, we were with a big group, maybe eight of us from the hostel, and the, the girls wanted to do some shopping. They were heavily into anime, and me and this uh, Spanish dude didn't really care about that. So they have arcades there, and it's not just for kids. It's, it's teenagers, it's older people, it's really old people, all sorts of aged people going into the arcades from every generation. And... Um, they are so fun. So we just went to an arcade, I think it had like five levels, and each level might have like a different type of game on it. And we were just playing games for like two hours. <laughs> I felt like a kid again, it was awesome. On one of those like pirate ship games where you have a gun and the whole thing moves and shooting skeletons, it was, it was awesome. And they have so many other crazy ones um, that I've never seen anywhere else, like some drum games and horse race, they have tons of stuff. And then, on some levels, they have the pachinko games. And on those levels, you can smoke. So you can smoke inside when you play the pachinko. Now, gambling's outlawed, so technically it's not gambling, but it's their version of slots. And through doing a few, you know, sort of side things, you can eventually get money out of it. So it's basically gambling. And they have them in all the arcade halls. And some arcade halls are only pachinko, by the way. But, I have to say, it was a good thing I only played Pachinko my last day in Tokyo. 
and you should do the same because it's the most addictive, awesome, fun thing ever. Even if you don't know what you're doing, and even if you don't win anything. I didn't win a single cent. I was there for about 30 minutes. I played the cheapest one, so I only spent, uh, I think, $5 on it. But it, it just shoots these metal balls out from the top, and they bounce around and try and get into a specific hole down at the bottom. And all you can do is control how hard it shoots the metal balls out. But every time it shoots out, there's a little video, like some sort of anime video that plays. And some characters fight each other, or they power up, depending upon which hole you got it in down there. And it's just so fun. And even though I won nothing, I felt like I had just conquered the world. It was exhilarating. And I didn't even know how to play. Just put some money, twist in the handle, and it was uh, it's just it was too fun. But you've also got some other districts there that are really, really great. I didn't get a chance to go to all of them, but one of the best ones you have to go to when you're there is Shinjuku. And Shinjuku is the one where you have um, all of the, how to say it, the stereotypical bright lights and signs. And it's kind of a nightlife area as well. And there, it's a big pedestrian area, lots of streets, restaurants, um, bars, interesting places to go to. And they also have the robot restaurant there. And I <laughs> put that video up of the robot restaurant. I think I put almost the full experience up. It is crazy, funny, awesome. It's, it's everything you expect from Tokyo. Let me put it that way. And it's this like little theater production underground. It's, it's just so fun. And right next to it is uh, Golden Guy. And Golden Guy is just Amazing. I'm going to come back to Golden Guy and save that for a little bit later, though. So you've got the nightlife area. Um, you've got Shibuya. They have lots of interesting stuff around there, not just the crossing. If you want to go out for clubs, you've got Rapongi Hills. You've got all sorts of other places to go to. I never made it to Rapongi Hills. Planned to go there a couple nights, but ended up going to Golden Guy four nights in a row instead. <laughs> and it's just... Everywhere you go, every experience you have, if it's exciting, if it's just regular, normal, you're going to a shrine, you're going to a temple, there's no one begging, there's no one grabbing you, there's no one asking you for money, there's no one pickpocketing you, there's no one doing anything to make your experience negative at all. That was perhaps the best part and the biggest contrast with European cities and Tokyo. And that just sort of lifts this huge weight off your shoulders where you can relax. Now, <clears throat> let's talk. Hmm, shit. Am I going to have to do some editing now? I don't want to edit anything. So I talked about Shinjuku, Shibuya. Oh my god, there's a place where you can go where they dress up as, as like weird, funny anime characters. Oh, I think it's every Sunday. And we missed it by about 15 minutes, unfortunately. But it's... <laughs> I think that's the best part about Tokyo, actually, is it's just... It's just quirky. It, it, it's so goofy and weird and funny, and you have this really strict side with all the business people that will wake up and go to work at 4 and 5 a.m. And then you have this side where people just let go. Uh, in, in really funny ways. Um, I mean, phew, Akihabara is probably the best example of that as a whole. But the anime thing as well, it's just crazy. And uh, maybe, maybe after the safety and the cleanliness, you know, if it was just that for Tokyo, it wouldn't be so special. But I have to say the food really makes it special. Because one of the best things about Japan, why well, I wasn't in too many cities, so let's say Tokyo, is that the restaurants, they focus on a single food, a single type of food. So if you've watched my videos, I put up a lot about the food that I had in Tokyo. And I don't do that with a lot of countries. Because a lot of times it's not that interesting or it's not that good. But every place I ate in Tokyo, Every single place, I think. There's, maybe there was one that was bad, but I can't honestly think about it. Think of it. Every place was amazing, so they focus on a food. So the eel place. The only thing they sold was eel. They sold variations of eel. 
And then beer. Watch out for the non-alcoholic beer, though. <laughs> it's just as expensive. It just doesn't do anything. Um, the place that sold the tempura. All they had was tempura with variations of fat. And that maybe was my favorite place, actually. I went there way too many times. The place that sells, um, uh, uh, I just did a video, dumplings. That's all I do, dumplings. But I say dumplings and bean sprouts and beer. <laughs> I mean, each place focuses on that food and they do a really good job. The noodles place, they focus on the noodles. So they make it really exceptionally well. And it's not too expensive con considering how expensive the rest of the city is. You get a meal for 10 US dollars, no problem. And it's gonna be an amazing meal because it's not a menu with 200 items trying to please everyone, ending up pleasing no one. No, they're like, I'm gonna make noodles. I'm gonna make some damn good noodles. That's all I make. I'm gonna sell them for a reasonable price. Perfect. So the food, I think I said this in one of the videos, it was after I ate uh, at a noodle place, the one where you actually slurp the food, but it was so amazing. I said after that, this makes me wanna to move to um, Tokyo. Um, but it's that in combination with the next thing. So when you go to a city, it's always fun to experience the nightlife. I mean, I am notorious for um, uh, joining pub crawls. I think it's an amazing way to go out in a new city. And so I love to go and experience the nightlife. And I think the first place that I went out in um, Tokyo was a place called Golden Guy, right next to Shinjuku. And Golden Guy, this combined with the food is what made me feel like I could actually live in this city. I could actually move here because the city is massive. It's huge. And it's not all giant buildings like in some cities. It's a lot of small buildings, so it's very spread out. So you feel overwhelmed. You can be on the public transportation for an hour, you know, underground, seeing no daylight, and then get out somewhere else. It just can be overwhelming. But Golden Guy is a few streets, right next to Shinjuku, a little area, a few streets, maybe four of them or so, that are very small, all pedestrian streets, uh, two-story buildings on each side, and it's just full of bars. And in each bar, they seat between seven people, maybe six or seven people, up to 15 people at the max. So they're super small. So you're in this gigantic mega city, and you have this place where they only seat or serve between seven and 15, usually around seven or eight or nine people. So it makes it feel really small and it makes it feel really local and really just like you're part of something. Like you can be noticed, not just, you know, I don't know, another speck in the crowd. <laughs> so the first night we go there, we go to some place with some guy who looked like some sort of long haired cross dressing samurai. <laughs> I don't know who he was, but he was awesome. And he was, he was uh, giving us all this different sake to taste and we were there for maybe an hour or so and we said, all right, let's go to another place. This was a very small place we went into. Everything was black. Everyone has a different theme, by the way. So every one of these places, it's usually the owner is the one who's working there. He decides all the rules and the themes and how late it's going to stay open, basically. So we go in there, uh, long-haired samurai dude. Then we go out and we're looking for another place to go to. This is one of the few issues with Japan, by the way. They don't always necessarily like foreigners, but they're so polite that they don't do it in a really, you know, aggressive way. So some of the places will say Japanese speakers only. And how many non-Japanese speak Japanese, you know? It's not like Spanish or English or French, where a lot of people who aren't from that country will speak it. So there are a lot of places that don't want foreigners to be in them. And, but there are places that specifically want foreigners to go into. So we end up going to um, one place after that where it was, <laughs> we were the only foreigners but they still let us in, no problem. It was up this tiny little staircase you could barely fit into, and you get up there, and it looked like an 80s movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme in Hong Kong, where everything was like 
red sort of leatherish things on the side of the walls and uh, weird old chandeliers, like some sort of 80s Hong Kong Jean-Claude Van Damme vampire would have been in this place. And these people are smoking up a storm and they had some movie from the 80s on as well, uh, dubbed in Japanese. And not subtitled, dubbed, so it was so funny. And we get in there where the only foreigners are like, shit, 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 shit. Like, is this a place that we should be or we shouldn't be? And maybe 30 seconds after we get in, we um, stand next to a table and the local guy there who's drunk off his ass, I think it was a Tuesday, he's dressed in a suit and he's like, oh, where are you from? And he, he gets a bottle of tequila and he pours us all four shots and we're like, oh shit, it's going to be a big night now. <laughs> And they, they bought us half of all of our drinks. We stayed there for two, three hours. It was amazing. We had such a great time. And they were so welcoming. It was like a family in there. Everybody knew everyone. And they're all asking about us and where we're from. And they, they were genuinely just open and expressive and friendly and sociable. Now, also very drunk, <laughs> let's be honest. But this is in a city where everyone is usually, you know, eyes down, you know, don't get in anyone's face, don't mess with anyone. So you're thinking, okay, well, what's social life gonna be like? And then you get to Golden Guy, and except for the places that don't want you there, the ones that let you in, they're just so welcoming, it was so fun. Went to another place just for a little bit to meet, meet up with another person from the hostel. It only sat six people in a row. We couldn't even fit in, we had to leave. And uh, then after that, we're walking down and we found a place that said, no charge for foreigners. Oh yeah, that's the thing. A lot of the places have a charge. So an eight to a $15 charge for you to get in. So it can be kind of expensive, but all the places that we went to were completely free. So the, the Jean-Claude Van Damme 80s Hong Kong place, free. The long-haired samurai dude place, free. The other place that was too small, free. So there are free ones, but a lot of them do charge. Um, but you know, just keep walking and find the good ones. And um, then we go to this one and it's called Lonely. I just had to look up the name of it actually. And it kind of almost brought tears back to my eye to think about it. We walk in and there's this guy there and he's got memorabilia from everything on the walls. I mean, everything. He's had famous anime art. Okay, apparently I'm talking too much and I ran out of battery and I'm running late anyway. I knew this was gonna happen when I started talking about Tokyo. Um, so I'm gonna have to pick this up a little bit later. Now, let me continue. Golden guy. Lonely, going into this pub, walking in, full of memorabilia. You have apparently really famous anime artists were in there drawing stuff for this guy. And the guy is an older guy, uh, I don't know, 60s, 70s, an older gentleman. Uh, you know, long white hair, beard, everything. And um, got all the memorabilia, all the stuff from the artist who drew things for him and signed it, gave him an autograph. He's got baseball memorabilia with the autographs. He's got movie memorabilia, knickknacks everywhere, little fun games to play. And he's just, he's so excited to meet foreigners. He loves meeting foreigners. There's, there's two little tables there and a little bar. So maybe it could hold maximum 10, 12 people or uh, maybe more if they're small. And He's telling us his life story, about all the things he's done, about the love of his life, about how the place used to be years ago, and it has a, a, a ledge above the bar where he used to play music for the patrons, and it was just chock full of people, he couldn't even get down, it was so full, and some people would serve themselves drinks and just put the money on the counter. I mean, it was just such a great time. He takes out a guitar and he starts playing for us, and there's, I think it was three or four of us at the time, we spent maybe two, three hours there just listening to his stories and checking out all the stuff he has and he put a movie on, I don't know what movie it was, but it was some awesome movie from the 80s or 90s, like, I don't know, Jaws or Terminator, some, something like that. And um, it was just, it was, it was a very welcoming, very heartwarming, very loving experience. I mean, it helped that we were... Uh, way past sober at this point. <laughs> but yeah, like I said before, just to be in such a big city and have such a genuine local experience. I mean, the sign on the door said foreigners don't pay. He wanted foreigners to come in. And so many people in the country aren't necessarily interested in dealing with foreigners. Although I said they're polite about it, but still. 
So that was kind of the end of the Golden Guy experience that night. And but I went there for I think I said four nights in a row. <laughs> so I wasn't able to go clubbing because I had such a great time, such a great experience there that I just wanted to go back. And I think in total I went to eight or nine different places. And one of the times I went, a couple of Japanese guys took me to their favorite place there with their buddy who works there. And it's great. They stayed open that night as well. I think that night was until 6 a.m., something like that. They just stay open as late as there are guests, basically. It's awesome. Um, there was one night, though, uh, where we, uh, we went there, but we came back a little early. So some people in the group tried to come back early, and this is one of the funny things about Tokyo. Actually, it's not very funny. Kind of funny, not funny. Um, it was the cab ride to get back to our hostel, because the metro was done after, I think, 1 a.m. The cab ride was over $300, 300 U.S. dollars. <laughs> or 45 minutes on public transit, which wasn't running. Or a three and a half hour walk. <laughs> so, of course, being uh, ignorant and thinking maybe we could do it in a lot less time, we decided to walk. And uh, we, we just failed. We didn't make it. But remember, I told you there's a 7-Eleven every block in Tokyo. And there's public restrooms everywhere. And the public restrooms are so clean, they don't even smell bad. It's amazing. So you have all these places to go and buy a beer. <laughs> have your beer. And then you can use the public restroom when you need to. Or you can go into the 7-Eleven and use their restroom there. Super clean. Amazing. So there was never a time where we felt too exhausted or scared or nervous because you get Wi-Fi everywhere. I mean, it was a big city that was not even remotely scary or intimidating. It was great. It was perfect. Um, and now I want to make sure that I get off a few things that I really liked, a few little things. Um, I think Golden Guy and the food were the two things that made me feel like I could definitely live there. And uh, Pachinko, as long as it doesn't become a problem. Um, but some things I really loved, I loved the sumo experience. The sumo experience was amazing. You have to pay for it. Uh, the one that I did since it was off season, there was, it wasn't a real match, but it was you're inside some sort of training facility maybe, or a mock training facility. And you watch the two sumos do sort of a mock fight. So it's not a real one, um, but they still go at it pretty hard and it's kind of funny and <laughs> weird to see. These giant guys so close to you. I have to say that when you see them on TV, they don't look hairy, but they are hairy. And one of them in the group it was so funny. He had no hair on the front of his body, just on his back. <laughs> it's like the reverse of what you'd expect. And just as big as you'd expect. And and you're sitting down there just fighting like a couple feet, a couple meters away from you basically. Uh, and then uh, there were, I think, eight or nine of us around the table, sitting on the ground, uh, which I do find rather uncomfortable. Um, but we had the traditional sumo dish, and every sort of sumo stable has their own meal. And here they cooked one, which was kind of, I don't know, regular sumo one. I don't know. But it was a bunch of food and a big pot, and it was just a fun, great experience. And everyone had a great time, and the sumos hung around afterwards to talk with us, and we got to put on a sumo suit. and. Uh, wrestle with them a little bit and it was just kind of a fun awesome experience I really liked it um, funny things I mentioned 7-eleven oh everyone talks about how packed the train cars are and the train cars are super packed uh, if you go during rush hour sometimes even if it's not rush hour but everyone's polite no one really gets too much in your space it kind of sounds like that doesn't make sense but you just don't feel as like <gasps> as you do in other cities where the train cars are full. And you don't fear pickpockets, which is great. Uh, so it's not like uh, Barcelona or Paris or Brussels or a million <laughs> other cities. Um, but the funny thing is, so you know that they get packed in, you see the videos where they push people in the train cars um, kind of politely, kind of aggressively in the mornings. But what you don't see is, I think it was one of my last days and I, um, I'm getting ready to put my bags in a train station to do a little bit more tourism, so I'm out at a 7 a.m. And there was nobody standing on the platform waiting to get into the car because that would be inefficient. 
it would be difficult for people to walk through. Even if you wait on the side of the cars, like they do in a lot of cities like Hong Kong and Singapore and so on, it still doesn't allow people to get out very quickly. So what they do is they have like a carnival ride, they have a line, and no one crosses that line. I think there was a guy there, like a little, with a little thing, like in a movie theater, that crosses over the line, a little, oh, I don't know what the hell it is, whatever. And at that line is maybe 30 feet or 10 meters away from the uh, entrance to the cars. So you have all the space in the world to walk out. And starting at that line, going half of the staircase and half of a little pathway, all the way up, four or five people across, people are just standing there, silently, minding their own business, not even talking, just standing. They look like robots, actually. Just like robots. Uh, maybe using their phone, but all the way up to the entrance of the train station on the ground level. I mean, all the way up, but just perfectly silent. And then when everyone has gotten off of the train, the guy opens the train style thing and lets everyone in and they just walk into the train and quietly and orderly, they fill up the train. And they stop and wait for the next group. It's, it's the best thing ever. It's just great. Gosh, in Europe sometimes it's just a battle. They don't even, they just want to flood the train right after the door gets on. And I'm like, hello, French people, what the hell? Yeah, exiting, back off. I mean, you just, it's like, finally, a country where people are decent and respect each other and give each other space. Man. Um, oh, shit, what else was I going to say? Uh, I wanted to cover that one. Um, oh, the best thing that I was never able to do in Tokyo. Oh my gosh. Okay, they have Mario Kart around the city. You can rent a go-kart with a group of other people, dress up like Mario Kart characters, and drive your go-karts through the city. <laughs> what the hell? I thought I was watching like a, a TV production or a commercial when I saw it on the street. It was just the most surreal the funniest, the coolest thing ever. You can do a Tokyo tour by Mario Kart. <laughs> it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But apparently you have to jump through a lot of hoops to do it because you know Japanese, they like to follow rules. So you have to have uh, like a, some sort of foreign uh, license or international license as well as your own license. And I don't know. You got to do a bunch of stuff for that. Um, read up on it. But when I do go back to Tokyo, I'm going to make sure that that is one of the things that I can do. That's, that's really the only thing I can think of, except for not trying a few of the food items, that uh, I would, uh, that I feel like I missed out on, is Mario Karting through Tokyo. <laughs> oh man. Can you tell that I really, really loved Tokyo? It's the one city that I haven't lived in that I want to live in more than anything else. It's just so cool. Yeah, there are problems, but almost, actually, almost none compared to any other city in the world. It's just awesome. Awesome, but expensive. You can spend, I do need to say a few negative things, I suppose. You could spend 15 or 20 US dollars a day on the public transit, <laughs> especially if you go to uh, places like the beach and they don't have one single transit system. They have multiple companies with multiple different lines. So getting around in Tokyo is confusing. Thank God there's lots of people to help you. Oh, and one thing I wanna say, how did I almost forget this? There was one train station, oh, which one was it? Was it the Shibuya one? Ikahabara one? I don't know. There was one big train station where they had uh, homeless people. I'm not actually certain if they were homeless or not though but they were, maybe they just couldn't get home, but they were sleeping in the train station. And usually if you have to use a bathroom in a train station, it's not a very pleasant experience. This one had about eight or nine homeless people lined up outside, making a little sleeping area for themselves. They were making cardboard forts to sleep in and on. I'm not even kidding you, like, like this high, you know, this high walls 
around there to give them their space and sleeping there. Nobody smelled. The bathroom in there, it didn't smell bad. Some of them were even eating. I don't know where they got a bowl and chopsticks and hot food, but they were just sitting on their cardboard eating. And some of them were getting ready to go to sleep. I mean, it was a very surreal experience. I'm still not certain if they were homeless or not. I did actually see one properly homeless person sleeping kind of near a little park area. But other than that, I only saw the people in the train station who were making their little cardboard forts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tokyo. So I know I talked a lot in this video, but I'm not really sorry about that because I, I just love Tokyo so much and there are very few places, there are really almost no places maybe that I like as much as Tokyo and I just wanted to convey my full experience and excitement and uh, I really think you should go to Tokyo if you can. It's really expensive, but it is maybe the uh, most fun most exciting, nicest experience I've had uh, in a big city while traveling. It's just awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to go back. I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to leave your comments in the section below and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And subscribe and hit the notifications button so you can see all the new videos. There's a lot more adventure to come.